Of all the big 2021 winners that have rolled over in the new year, few have been more frustrating for me than Nucor, the nation's best deal maker with a stock that I like so much. It's a large position for me in the travel trust. It's not like this was some high flying cloud software stock with no earnings. Nucor is the definition of what should be working here. They make real stuff, earn tons of money doing so, and return much of that money to shareholders via 2.1% dividend and a voracious buyback. But the analysts just can't bring themselves to believe that Nucor's strength might be sustainable. They've been predicting a sharp decline in earnings over the next few years. And that's why it was so encouraging when Nucor reported a better than expected quarter today. More importantly, management gave excellent guidance. They said earnings in the first quarter would only be slightly reduced versus the fourth quarter. Overall, they sounded very confident, which is why the stock jumped 4% today in what you know was a bad day. So has Nucor gotten its groove back, or did it never lose its groove? Let's take a closer look with Leon Topalian. And Leon is the president and CEO of Nucor. Learn more about the quarter, what comes next. Mr. Topalian, welcome back to Mad Money. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate you having me. Well, I'll tell you, we never lost the groove, Jim. No, I know. And your quarter was so <laughs> excellent. And you're, one of the things you just said right up front, you will be a voracious buyer of your stock. You bought a lot of stock. You're really retiring a lot of stock. What makes you so confident versus almost every other steel company reported that told me things are getting bad? Yeah, no. You know, Jim, we're, we're so diversified as a company. We're in everything from high-end automotive to construction products to energy, agriculture, and everything in between. So as you think about the breadth of our footprint, our relationship with our customers, Every end market we're tracking is showing an improvement in 2022. The other um, point that's really important to remember, the start of 2021 was not a great quarter. We are starting from so much higher a position that's going to continue to mean great returns as we move into the first quarter of this year. So let's talk about some of those end markets. For instance, auto, huge for you, still nowhere near where it could be because of chip capacity, chip problems. Oil and gas, they are beginning for the first time, Halliburton just told us, to do more drilling again. They haven't done that. And then, obviously, infrastructure. We're just now getting bills out of Washington. They're going to save us. So your end markets, to me, seem tight. Yeah, with, without a doubt. And, and so, again, we think um, with all our intel on the auto side, we'll start to see that chip shortage begin to subside in the second half of this year. But that pent-up demand, as you and I have talked about many times, is going to take a multi-year recovery. It's not going to fix itself in 2022. So the disposable income, the end-user demand is still really strong. And I think um, had we not had the chip supply issue or it fi fixed itself this year, you'd see that boom into well above 16, 16 and a half or 17 million units. The other sectors, Jim, that uh, continue to show promise, as you mentioned, energy is, is coming. But in the renewable space, a new course opportunity with Brandenburg, um, the most diversified plate mill that will come online later this year, positions Nucor incredibly well to meet that demand in, in the renewable space, both onshore and offshore wind. Okay, now how about uh, one blemish that I need understood because I've got to try to figure out every line's been good. Is I just understand need to understand sheet because sheet was not what I thought it should be, but that's maybe because I don't I'm not as close to the industry obviously as you are. Yeah, look, you know, what I tell you is, you know, she gets a lot of attention for good reason. You know, Jim, we made $6.8 billion of net earnings last year. A majority of that was attributable to our sheet group. They set a record at over 11 million tons shipped last year and over $6 billion of EBITDA from that group alone. So their performance has been incredible, and that's going to continue. Now, we're seeing some softening, and our weighting is a little more hot band centric than some of our competitors. But also keep in mind that in 2021, in a year where some of our competitors were flat or actually went down in sheet shipments, Nucor increased by 10 percent. So our move and our move up, particularly in automotive, our share grew in a declining market. So those things are going to continue because we do offer things like Iconic, that is a net zero steel. Our first coil of that went to General Motors a few weeks ago. And again, you're going to see that move as we move into West Virginia and announce that, that new state-of-the-art sheet mill there. Uh, Nucor's value proposition to provide uh, differentiated capabilities for our customers is unlike any of our competitors. 
Well, tell me more about that, because, you know, when I see people looking for seven dollars for next year or 17 this year, I think they must think that all steels created equal. One of the reasons I always like Nucor is because it really is not equal to the other company's steel. You are doing different things with technology that make it your steels proprietary. Yeah, absolutely. So, again, we announced in October of last year, Iconic, which is a family of net zero steels, um, again, the first of which shipped. But we are the first company to be able to produce net zero steels at scale, Jim. That demand isn't just in the OEM automotive sector. That is a growing segment. You and I have talked about many times the, the move in ESG to provi provide a sustainable platform for the long term. When you're talking to the cleanest steel maker on the planet, um, enables Nucor to, again, provide that differentiated value proposition. Think about our um, Hickman startup in our galvanizing line in Hickman, Arkansas. It's the first EAF in the world to be able to produce a full Generation 3 automotive steel. So we are doing things, Jim, that uh, our competition just can't do today. No, that's really a great way to put it, which is why, frankly, the analysts who want to look at it all as if it's all just some sort of, like, uh, just a sheet are getting it wrong. And that's why I think you're so smart to be buying back all that stock, retiring all of it, because as you and I both know, Nucor never has just one year of greatness. It has multiple years. That's been the history of your Absolutely. company. And I want to thank you, Leon Topali, and President CEO of Nucor. Great to see you, sir. Congratulations on amazing. Thank party. you. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Jim. Okay. Appreciate that. And yeah, money's back in the break. Coming up next. Let's make money together. What do we got? Kramer's bringing the thunder and answering your burning questions in today's edition of The Lightning Round.